we're now into October, but um, still a lot of greenery around. I mean, this time last year, everything was brown because we had that drought, but uh, the trees are all still looking pretty green at the moment. The grass is looking quite green. In fact, it's kind of unremittingly green because a lot of the wildflowers are gone now. There's just an occasional little pop of yellow from some, you know, dandelion or ragwort or something like that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's all unremittingly green and starting to turn brown. This looks very much like uh, a little group of parasols that have come up. Look at these lovely things. It's a beautiful little mushroom, isn't it? And it's the first little group I've seen so far this year. I'm not going to pick them. I'm not going to pick them, even though they are edible, because uh, I want them to spore. And hopefully no one else will pick them too. Then we'll get more next year. And there's a few more just over here. Little parasols. I don't know what's been eating them, but wow, they've really got to that one. Nothing left of that one. That one was just freshly coming up. What about these ones over here? Yeah, I never know whether these have just been kicked over by kids or mindless people or whether it's animals that have knocked them over and animals have been eating them. It's always hard to tell. Plant vandalism has been very much in the news the last couple of days with the uh, cutting down of the sycamore gap tree uh, up north, which is an appalling thing to have happened. Um, and it's funny because at the same time that that was talked about, people were saying, yeah, what is it with people because it was it was announced that a 16 year old boy had been arrested I said what is it with kids and, and vandalizing plants and they talked about the fact that in their local park someone had planted a load of brand new young trees and they've all been snapped off it's a weird thing isn't it I always think it must be something to do with power and inadequacy it's like you know you're not powerful enough to take on another human so you decide to pick on a defenseless tree and in the case of the saplings a baby tree it's just a very weird thing a similar sort of thing happened last year there were just a bit i'm coming up to now a bit i'm walking uh, there's a little group of cherry trees down this little uh, woodland walk just here and last year i mentioned it in my previous video there were three chicken of the woods there was one growing on this tree here just behind me there was another growing on that cherry tree just over there and one a little bit further on and uh, i grabbed a little bit off this tree I grabbed a little bit here, a couple of lobes. I took over it and they were very nice. Came back the next day, someone had knocked it off the tree. And I went down the walk and someone had knocked the other two off the tree as well. We've not seen any come back this year, which suggests to me that they didn't get mature enough to spore. So you didn't get a spore trail with all the um, spores being taken by the wind along the trail there. And uh, no chicken in the woods this year. It's just a strange thing to do when I think back to my use. Yeah, I got up with some stupid things like all kids do, but it never occurred to me to go out and vandalise trees and plants. Uh, it's just, it just seems like such a mindless and silly thing to do. It's very sad. I saw this and thought I had a new hagstone, but I hollowed out the hole and it's just a pit. I thought it might go through to there, but it doesn't. No, it's just a flint with a pit. In a previous video, I mentioned about how the ploughs going over here smash up some of the flint nodules and create these incredibly sharp edges. I mean, look at this flint here. This one's obviously has been cracked open by the plough. And just look, look at how razor sharp some of these edges are. I mean, I could cut with that quite easily. Well, I found one. Hey, look, see? Hole going all the way through. This is definitely a hagstone, but it also weighs a ton and it's bloody enormous. So I'm afraid this one will not be coming home with me today. Sorry. Another arts project that may be coming up on this channel fairly soon is I've got a whole bunch of walking sticks that I'm going to make. Now, uh, this is all blackthorn, and blackthorn is a lovely thing to make walking sticks from because it's so hard. They used to call it ironwood because it's so strong. Irish shillelaghs are made from it, and uh, you do get occasionally, you can see this one here, you see, there's a bit of a bendy one here, but behind it, there's a lovely reasonably straight rod now i don't cut down any live wood but the people who manage these fields as i've explained in a previous video um this is 42 acres that's owned by the community which we bought from developers so it can't be built on again and it recently got designated a village green i think it's the biggest village green in britain at 42 acres it can't be built on but it does have to be managed and every so often they come out and they cut the hedges back when they do that i will help myself 
to long straight hazel rods, long straight uh, blackthorn rods, and uh, anything else I can find that may that may just work out okay as a walking stick. Look at the amount of rose hips there are in here. It's all dog roses, it's all wild. They're not very big, and you'd have to pick an awful lot of them to make a decent rose hip syrup. But I have to say, the wild ones I always find are, are a lot sweeter than the um, ones that you pick in your garden from a domesticated rose. There's banks and banks and banks of them. I think I better bring my gloves next time. Toodle pip.